Hey everybody, I swear I'm not high this week, it's just that something is irritating my eyes. Anyway, Blue Sky launched my favorite software update of the year, China successfully made an EUV machine, and Rand Bikes and Cowboy continued to struggle. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, for my first story of the week, Blue Sky launched a software update that is so elegant I hope everyone copies it. It's called Find Friends and it lets Blue Sky go through your contacts on your phone to find associated Blue Sky profiles while also not being an incredible privacy invasion. So normally when you let an app access your contacts, you're essentially giving all the private information from all of your contacts to a company like Meta without actually getting their permission first, right? That is insane and also questionably legal. Meta, for example, has used contact uploads for ad targeting because of course they have, they are the literal worst. Anyway, Blue Sky's approach makes you verify your phone number first and then they process your contacts. Then when somebody in your contact book goes through the same process and Blue Sky finds a match, they will then let both of you know. A match only happens if both parties participate. Blue Sky only stores phone numbers as hashed pairs, your number combined with each contact's number, and you can delete your uploaded contacts and opt out entirely if you ever change your mind. How cool is that? That's like having your cake and eating it too. I'm on Blue Sky as Tech Altar, by the way, and also on Mastodon if you want to hang out, and I really hope that other services like Mastodon will adopt this too. Okay, for my second story of the week, a new report from Reuters claims that a Shenzhen team completed a working prototype of an EUV machine in early 2025. EUV is the technology that is used to essentially print or burn the details of a chip onto a silicon wafer. The only company that has managed to make a machine for it so far is ASML from the Netherlands, and it's the key technology that the US has banned China from accessing in order to keep their chip industry less competitive. Now, Reuters says that the Chinese lithography machine was built by former ASML engineers, that the government is targeting 2028 for working chips, but sources say that 2030 is more likely. They say that the machine was apparently built by reverse engineering existing machines from ASML, and that they also helped by the availability of parts from older ASML machines on secondary markets. Now, this is different from the other EUV attempts that we've seen coming out of the country so far, from what I can tell, but it looks like the timelines are accelerating. That said, EUV was first used in serial production in 2018, so unless China manages to not just copy but actually surpass the first ASML machines right out of the gate, then they might still be 10 years or so behind even when they finally launch this machine, so their work is far from over. So let's see where this goes. Okay, and for my third story of the week, Radbike this week filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. They were once the largest e-bike brand in the US and they raised a total of $329 million across several funding rounds, but now they have run out of money and they're hoping that somebody will buy them and turn things around. Meanwhile, Cowboy just this week announced that they are actually getting bought by another company because they're running out of money. They were the third largest of the big three custom e-bike brands together with Red Bikes and Van Move, and as you probably know, I'm a happy Cowboy rider myself, but sadly as this excellent chart from Bike Europe shows, their revenues exploded during Corona and then they came crashing down after, while their losses remained stubbornly high. Cowboy was actually bought by the aptly named Rebirth Group, which is the French firm that had taken over manufacturing their bikes and which also makes many other bike brands like Peugeot bikes, so hopefully they can get back on their feet again just like Van Move has kind of made a small comeback. I was actually thinking about making a deep dive video on this big boom and bust cycle from the three big e-bike companies, and so if that is something that you'd like to see, let me know. And if you're fascinated by these engineering-related topics, then especially with the new year and the holidays coming up, now is a good time to invest in yourself to gain a much deeper understanding of all of them. With my sponsor Brilliant, you can spend your holidays truly grasping complex topics like circuits, logic gates, large language models, and so on, in a way that's actually fun. They have massively upgraded their library in 2025, so there are loads of topics to explore across engineering, science, maths, data science, and more. And if you dive deep enough into one of them, you could actually end up building some of the newsworthy stuff soon yourself, instead of just listening to what cool things others have dreamt up. I think my viewers would especially enjoy a course called Digital Circuits, which dives deep into how computers actually work. They start with simple concepts like binary numbers, the ones and zeros you always hear about, then they move on to breaking down logic gates, which are the fundamental building blocks inside your processor, and they continue to build concept by concept towards you actually properly understanding these things. And instead of just passively watching a video, you actually get to practice each learning with interactive exercises to make sure that you really understand each step. Not only is this extremely effective, but it's also just way more fun than sitting through a lecture. And to try Brilliant for free for the first 30 days, visit brilliant.org TFC or scan the QR code on screen, or you can also click on the link in the description. If you do so, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which grants you unlimited daily access. 
Okay, and as for our release monitor, not a single interesting product has launched this week, I think, so let's just move on to the brief. Apple released Sharp this week, which is an open source tool that turns flat 2D images into kind of 3D looking ones where you can scroll around and get a different perspective. They've shown a bunch of examples and compared them to competing tools which claim to do the same thing, and unsurprisingly the output from the Apple model does indeed seem much nicer. Cool. Then in slightly depressing news, the EU Commission proposed a reversal of their ban on combustion engine cars that was supposed to start in 2035. For now the proposal just wants to reduce the 100% target phase out to a 90% one, though of of course, many car and fossil fuel companies are already smelling blood in the water, and they have of course insisted that they want further reductions. And this is despite all the European brands, in my opinion, finally launching really interesting EVs this year. From the Renault 5 to the BMW iX3 to the Mercedes CLA to the Volkswagen ID Polo, they're all finally really good. Counterpoint published a graph this week showing that in China, the world's largest car market by far, local brands are now absolutely wiping the floor with their international competitors, and so slowing down electric car development in this environment seems extra foolish, but okay. Moving on, Mozilla got a new CEO and in his announcement post this week, he said that he wanted to position Mozilla as the trusted software company. This, according to him, consists of first, giving users agency. Privacy, data use, and AI must be clear and understandable. Controls must be simple. AI should always be a choice, something that people can easily turn off. But of course, people instead just completely freaked out about the fact that he said AI at all and that he dared to call Firefox an AI browser. How dare he? Now, I have to say, I found all the outrage quite overblown. Like he said multiple times that you should easily be able to opt out. So I don't know. I I'm not worried myself. Instead, much sillier AI news this week came from Microsoft, who released a new ad for Copilot. The ad shows people asking Copilot to do four distinct things. Show me how to sync my holiday lights to my music. Help me figure out these instructions. Convert this recipe on my screen so it feeds 12. 14. Can you read the HOA guidelines and make sure I'm not breaking any rules? So The Verge had the brilliant idea to actually just try if Copilot could do any of the things that they saw on the ad, and you will not be surprised to hear that the simple answer is no. Copilot failed completely at every single task. Amazing! I've left a link to the article below, as I do with all the news stories, and I really recommend reading this even though it is behind a paywall, but if you can, it's hilarious. And I mean, how is this even legal? It feels like straight up false advertisement. Copilot cannot do any of the things that are shown in the ad. Oh boy, but then still with AI, ChatGPT Images was released this week, which is OpenAI's answer to Google's Nano Banana. It allows you to use, for example, real images in combination with prompts to essentially deepfake new images, and I find it quite amazing how the whole ad is just showing a person essentially deepfaking their whole life. And like, on the one hand, that is technically impressive. On the other hand, what kind of timeline are we in that deepfake machines, literal deepfake machines, are what the world's richest companies are working on unironically? That's crazy. Then, in much better news for Europeans at least, Deutsche Bank and Postbank announced that they too are now going to embrace Wiro right after N26 said the same last week. Wiro is the new cross-bank payment layer, a bit like India's UPI or PayPal, that is now really starting to gain steam, and it should hopefully become a new European payment standard for everything from peer-to-peer -peer transactions to online payments and more. Fingers crossed. Next, Intel appointed Trump's economic advisor as their head of government affairs. Specifically, we're talking about Robin Colwell, the deputy assistant to the president and the deputy director of the National Economic Council, and he follows none other than Bruce Andrews, who worked under the then-President Barack Obama. Cool. Don't worry about corruption, just keep the revolving door going. It's gonna be great! <laughs> And moving on, Apple will now officially open iOS to third-party app stores in Japan after it was forced by the Japanese government, and already AltStorePal, the alternative iOS app store that first launched in the EU, has now announced that it is launching in Japan too. Cool! And still with Apple, the company announced a new repair process that allows you to easily replace a battery on the M5 14-inch MacBook Pro this week, which was formerly really annoying. The battery swap should now be really easy, and Apple will also sell you the parts separately. Nice! But meanwhile, less nice is that the maker of the vacuum cleaner brand Roomba, called iRobot, who kind of invented the whole category, filed for bankruptcy in the US. Ironically, their Chinese supplier, uh, Paikia Group, or whatever they're pronounced, who actually pronounced many of their products, is expected to take control. Unsurprisingly, their CEO later admitted that iRobot did not take the competition seriously enough, which is what led to them amassing a four-year innovation gap. Ouch. This is similar to how Segway, GoPro, and many others kind of invented a whole category and then just waited around and their Chinese competitors eventually overtook them. Painful, but okay. Alright, don't forget to try Brilliant for free for the first 30 days and then get 20% off an annual premium subscription with my link below, and I'll see you next Friday.